Officiating today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Kevin Mangum, Deputy Com Commanding General, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command. Joining us today are our distinguished guests, Ms. Lori Pritchard, spouse of Command Sergeant Major Joe Pritchard. The Malloy family members include daughter, Ms. Danielle Malloy, parents of Mrs. Malloy, Mr. Randall, and Mrs. Mary Denardi. The DeFries family members include parents and brother of Command Sergeant Major DeFries, Mr. Herb and Ms. Bonnie DeFries, and Mr. Herb DeFries, Jr. Parents of Mrs. DeFries, Mr. George and Mrs. Naomi Hawley, and Mr. Sam and, uh, and Dr. Ann Stevens. Our distinguished guests are Mr. Tom Thomas, West Texas civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army. Dr. Aubrey Butts, Director, Institute of the NCO Professional Development. Lieutenant Colonel John Kirby, U.S. Army retired, 14th USASMA Commandant. Command Sergeant Major Daniel Daly, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command. Command Sergeant Major Labert Bahari, United States Army Research Development and Engineering Command. Command Sergeant Major John Jones, Pennsylvania National Guard. Command Sergeant Major and Mrs. Lance Lair, 1st Armored Division of Fort Bliss. Command Sergeant Major William Hambrick, Brigade Modernization Command. Command Sergeant Major Dan Elder, U.S. Army Retired, Senior Mentor, Association of the United States Army, and a member of the USASMA Hall of Honor. Command Sergeant Major Lee Handy, U.S. Army Retired, United Services Automobile Association. Command Sergeant Major Don Thomas, U.S. Army Retired, Deputy Director of NCO Programs, Association of the United States Army. Chief Master Sergeant Alan Ussery, U.S. Air Force Retired Pioneer Services. Command Sergeant Major Colin Younger, U.S. Army Retired. Mr. Richard Dale, President and CEO, and Ms. Letty West, create Greater El Paso Chamber of Commerce. Ms. Sophia Gonzalez, Security Service Federal Credit Union. And our very special guest, Mrs. William O. Wooldridge, spouse of the First Sergeant Major of the Army. Please rise for the entrance of the official party, laying of honors, the invocation given by Chaplain James McKay, the presentation of the colors, and the playing of our national anthem. Father, as we begin this change of commandancy here at USASMA, we call upon your presence and ask your special blessing today. Open our hearts and minds to the warmth of your grace. Empower us in the direction of your calling in our lives. Lord, we praise you for the dedication and service of the departing commandant, Command Sergeant Major Malloy and his wife Deborah, as this loyal and dedicated Army family moves on. We ask that you bless them in all their future endeavors, wherever and whatever they might be. We also ask your blessing upon the incoming Commandant, Command Sergeant Major DeFries. Give him wisdom, knowledge, and strength in the performance of his duties. And may your blessing also be upon Jane, his wife, as she becomes USASMA's new First Lady. Finally, we pray you will bless the soldiers and civilians of USASMA. Give us the strength and perseverance to always carry on and succeed in our duty. And it's in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
please be seated. At this time, Ms. Donna Davis will present Ms. Deborah Malloy a bouquet of red roses as a symbol of the care and devotion she rendered to members of the USASMA family. Flowers are also being given to Command Sergeant Major Malloy's daughter, Ms. Danielle Malloy. Master Sergeant Ruin is presenting a bouquet of yellow roses to Ms. Jane DeVries, symbolizing the continuing friendships that will blossom within the USASMA family. Flowers are also being presented to Ms. Bonnie DeVries, Ms. Naomi Hawley, and Dr. Ann Stevens. Deborah is now presenting Jane with a very special USASMA pin. This unique memento is passed between each Commandant's wife in recognition of their special place within the organization and the hearts of the command. <laughs> command Sergeant Major Rory L. Malloy assumed duties as the second enlisted Commandant of the United States Army Sergeant Spanger Academy on June 8, 2011. Command Sergeant Major Malloy has held a variety of leadership positions throughout his career to include team leader to Command Sergeant Major, being a drill sergeant, ROTC senior instructor, operations Sergeant Major, post Command Sergeant Major, and division Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Major Malloy was born in Campbellsburg, Indiana, and reported for active duty in January 1985 at Fort Benning, Georgia, for one station unit training and basic airborne school. Command Sergeant Major's assignments include tours with the three of the 325th Parachute Infantry Regiment, the 82nd Airborne Division, three of the 325th Airborne Battalion Combat Team, Vincenza, Italy, to the 58th Infantry, Fort Benning, University of Dayton, Ohio, the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault with one of the 327th Infantry, three of the 327th Infantry, three of the 502nd Infantry, and two of the 187th Infantry, Operation Iraqi Freedom 1. First Brigade Combat Team, which was Ap Operation Iraqi Freedom 4, the Joint Readiness Training Center in Fort Polk, Louisiana, 1st Cavalry Division Command Sergeant Major for Operation Iraqi Freedom 9 and 10, and currently serves as the Commandant of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy. Command Sergeant Major Malloy's military education includes basic and advanced NCO courses, 1st Sergeant's course, and the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy, Class 52, where he graduated on the Commandant's list from each course. Command Sergeant Major Malloy graduated as a distinguished honor graduate from both the Jump Master course and Drill Sergeant School. He also graduated as the honor graduate from the Air Assault School. He has completed the Force Management course and the Keystone course. Command Sergeant Major Malloy's other honors include being inducted in the Sergeant Morales Award and the Sergeant Audie Murphy Award. Selection as the 1993 Fort Benning Drill Sergeant of the Year 2000 NCO of the Year for the Northern Kentucky and Ohio ROTC region, and awarded the Centurion Medal for the Order of St. Maurice, the St. George Medal, and the St. Barbara Medal. Command Sergeant Major Malloy graduated from college with honors as a cum laude with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Management, and as a summa cum laude with a Master of Business Administration Human Resource Management. Command Sergeant Major's awards and decorations include the Legion of Merit with three Oak Leaf Clusters, the Bronze Star Medal for Valor and three Oak Leaf Cluster, the Meritorious Servant Medal with three Oak Leaf Clusters, the Army, the Army Commendation Medal with three Oak Leaf Clusters, the Army Achievement Medal with six Oak Leaf Clusters, the National Defense Med Service Medal with Bronze Star, the Global War and Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, the Global War and Terrorism Service Medal, the Iraq Campaign Medal with Silver Star, Master Parachutist Badge, Combat Infantryman Badge, Expert Infantryman Badge, Drill Sergeant Identification Badge, Pathfinder Badge, Air Assault Badge, and the Italian Parachutist Badge. Command Sergeant Major Malloy is married to Miss Deborah Malloy, and they are proud parents of the two adult children, daughter Danielle and son Rory. 
daughter-in-law Jama, and great and granddaughter Riley. Command Sergeant Major Dennis E. DeFries entered the United States Army on July 24, 1984, in Chicago, Illinois. He completed basic and infantry AIT at Fort Benning, Georgia. Command Sergeant Major DeFries began his career at Fort Knox as a rifleman and as the assistant, assistant gunner for the 4th Battalion, 54th Infantry Regiment. He was then assigned to 1st Battalion, 39th Infantry in Baumholder, Germany serving as a team leader and squad leader. CSM DePriest then served as the section leader with 1st Battalion, 187th Infantry Rakassans at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and deployed in support of Desert Shield and Desert Storm. CSM DePriest also served with 3rd Battalion, 187th Infantry Regiment as a platoon sergeant and the 1st Sergeant. CSM DePriest served as a recruiter in Chicago and as a drill sergeant at Fort Knox, Kentucky in July of 2003. Excuse me, in July of 2003, CSM DeFries returned to 3 of the 187 and served as the B Company 1st Sergeant during Operation Iraq Freedom 1. He was then assigned as the 1st Sergeant of HHC 101st Airborne Division before assignment as the CSM of 3 of the 187 Infantry Regiment deploying as the battalion's CSM twice for OIF-4 and OIF-6. CSM DeFries was then selected and assigned as the brigade CSM for the 1st BCT, the 10th Mountain Division in February of 2009, and deployed as the brigade CSM to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom 10. He was then assigned as the brigade CSM for 1st BCT 4th Infantry Division. His latest assignment was as a Division CSM first for First Army Division East. CSM DeFries has attended all levels of non-commissioned officer education system and is a graduate of Class 53 of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy. He is also a graduate of Airborne, Air Assault, Rappel Master, Recruiter, and Drill Sergeant Schools. CSM DeFries holds a baccalaureate degree with, from Excelsior College. CSM DePriest's awards and decorations include the Legion of Merit, Second Oak Leaf Cluster, the Bronze Star Medal, Second Oak Leaf Cluster, the Purple Heart, the Meritorious Service Medal, Third Oak Leaf Cluster, the Air Medal, the Army Commendation Medal with Third Oak Leaf Cluster, the Army Achievement Medal with the First Oak Leaf Cluster, the Good Conduct Medal, Ninth Award, Combat Infantryman Badge with Star, Parachutist Badge, Air Assault Badge, Expert Infantryman Badge, Drill Sergeant Identification Badge, and Gold Army Recruiter Badge. He is a member of the Sergeant Audie Murphy Award, the Order of St. Maurice Centurion, and the Order of St. Barbara. CSM DeFries is married to Ms. Jane DeFries and is a proud father of five adult children, Rachel, Frank, Sarah, Samuel, and Jennifer. As a singular and unique organization, the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy is led solely by non-commissioned officers. Unlike those in any other organization, USASMA's NCO leaders assume responsibilities and wield authorities otherwise withheld only to commissioned officers. The challenges are great, and greater still are those vested in the Academy's Commandant, who must execute command responsibilities while holding the office of a nominative Sergeant Major. The duties of the Commandant require the forward-thinking analysis of a seasoned commanding officer, as well as the deeply grounded expertise as a command sergeant major. The USASMA Commandant represents a benchmark of excellence and the command sergeant's major who fill this role and the epitome of NCO leaders. Today, we will witness the exchange of USASMA's colors between two such leaders. In the earliest of times, Leaders used a banner or other symbol to identify themselves and as a rallying point for their warriors. For the modern day soldier, the colors record the unit's history, its glories, and its battles. The history of the passing of the unit's colors represents the passing responsibility of command. The deputy commandant retrieves the colors from the color bearer and then passes the colors to the outgoing commandant as a symbol of the support of the non-commissioned officers of the commandant and the mission. The outgoing commandant, as his final act, then passes the colors to the deputy commanding general as a symbol of the relinquishment of command and responsibility. 
The Deputy Commanding General then passes the colors to the incoming Commandant, putting full faith and confidence in his abilities to exercise fairness and impartiality and to train and care for the soldiers under his charge. The Commandant then passes the colors back to the Deputy Commandant as a symbol of his trust in the non-commissioned officers of the organization. The Deputy Commandant returns the colors to the color bearer to safeguard them and the unit's reputation. In accordance with AR 600-20, the undersigned assumes command as Commandant of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy, Fort Bliss, Texas, effective 10 June 2014, signed Dennis E. DeFries, Command Sergeant Major, Commandant. Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Commanding General of the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, Lieutenant General Mango. Good morning. Mr. Thomas, Dr. Butts, Command Sergeant Major Daly, Command Sergeants Major, past and present, Chief Master Sergeants past and present, Mrs. Woldridge, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends of the Malloys, the Freezes, and the United States Army Sergeants Major Academy, thanks for joining us this morning for this significant event. Whether you call it a change of command, a change of responsibility, a change of commandancy, that's a hard word to say, <laughs> whatever you call it, it's a significant change in leadership at one of our Army's premier hallmark and hallmark institutions. It's a great honor for me to share this time with you at the pinnacle of our non-commissioned officer education system, a place where we really put the backbone into the backbone of our NCO Corps. Somebody told me, several sergeants major told me, uh, have told me that just coming out here and breathing the hot, but dry hot air <laughs> and rubbing elbows with sergeants major from across our army would re-green me and fortify my purpose uh, uh, motivation and direction, and they're absolutely right. It's great to be here in, at the Sergeant's Major Academy where all of those things happen every day. We all know that the United States Army is the best in the world, the best the world's ever seen, and the envy of many, if not all, of our Army friends around the world. The key to our success is, always has been, and always will be our magnificent non-commissioned officer for we get many, many, many senior visitors at Training and Doctrine Command throughout the year from armies around the world, both large and small, with different capabilities and capacities. Each one of those, though, each one of those visitors come in, with a shared uh, interest in how we do what we do. How do we build our great NCO Corps and, and they also very much admire our non-commissioned officer education system. They admire that core and that system, the backbone of our force, and the system that develops the best NCOs on the planet. It's this system that has ensured victory on every battlefield for American forces over the last two centuries. Our NCOs are the special sauce, the special sauce that sets our army apart and gives us an asymmetric advantage. A key ingredient, if not the key ingredient to that special sauce, is the crown jewel of our non-commissioned officer education system, the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy. It is here we educate, train, develop, challenge, and broaden our most senior NCOs, preparing them to lead our Army and the magnificent standard bearers of our NCO Corps. And I know that 599 <coughs> did just that, graduated this past Friday. It's here that we top off the best with the best. Can anyone who's ever spent time with the U.S. Army's Sergeant Major ever doubt it is a special mix of experience, education, wisdom, and a soldier's common sense empowered to lead and execute 
that says RNCO Corps and Army of Park. Sergeants Major are special people, and it is this greatest institution, this academy, that adds this most secret ingredient to our special sauce. Changes of command, changes of commandants are bitter course, are of course bitter events, bittersweet as they force us to say goodbye to a team that's been so important to us for the last several years, and in this case, three years for the Malloys, and welcome a new leadership team and new members of our family who will lead the organization into the future. It's really a great privilege for me to be here and do that with two great NCO leaders that I've known for, for years and, and respect so highly. But luckily, the bitterness of today's farewell is more than mitigated by the pride and respect we have for the Malloys as we reflect on what they've meant to the Sergeant Major Academy. Over the past two years, Command Sergeant Major Rory Malloy has added his own flair and flourish to the secret sauce setting the standard as he enhanced training, established new and innovative programs, and ensured the hard lessons learned on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan improved the readiness and leadership of NCO leaders across our army. His leadership was reflected in many innovations with the development of the NCO Academy Commandant's Pre-Command Corps and working with Special Operations Command on their Joint Special Operations Force Senior Enlisted Advisor Corps ensuring we put as much effort into preparing our senior enlisted leaders as we do our senior officers. Through these and dozens of other changes and ideas, large and small, it's safe to say that Command Sergeant Major Malloy has advanced the NCO education system in every way and set the conditions for our Army and Sergeants Major and NCOs for many years to come. At his side and often leading the way was Deborah, whose genuine care and affection was always on display. Deborah was the heartbeat of many of the organizations on this installation that provide service and support to soldiers and our families. She dedicated herself in service to soldier spouses and civilians, spending countless hours with the Fort Bliss community as well as the Sergeant's Major Academy Family Readiness Group. And her efforts alongside with her husband to redesign the Spouse Leadership Development Course, ensure spouses of senior NCOs have the tools that they need to be force multipliers in the health and welfare of soldiers and their families. Deborah, on behalf of General Perkins, Command Sergeant Major Daly, the entire TRADOC team and the larger Army family, thanks for doing the really tough job. Thanks for volunteering and doing more than your fair share. We know that your legacy will be felt for years to come as well as you put your fingerprint on families and supporting soldiers and families for years to come. So thank you very much. As, a, as Rory and Deborah in this chapter of their lives, they'll soon begin a new one as they will surely continue to serve our Army and nation. We wish you both Godspeed and the best of luck as you head out on your next adventure. And we, like you, wait with bated breath to determine what that next adventure might be. But we know that you'll continue to lead our army. Know that you made a huge difference here uh, in proving your foxhole. Well done. Now we get to the sweet part of this ceremony as we welcome the new leadership team of Command Sergeant Major Dennis and Jaden DeFries. Sergeant Major DeFries is a proven leader who has excelled in both peace and war and has successfully led soldiers at every level from platoon to major command. He's no stranger to the Sergeant's Major Academy, as you heard, having graduated in Class 53. He comes to us from having been a Division Sergeant Major in 1st Army Division East. The selection to be the third enlisted commandant of the, of the Sergeant's Major Academy is a testament to his abilities and our, our Army's great, great trust in, and confidence in the job he will do here at Fort Bliss. Luckily for the Fort Bliss and El Paso communities, Sergeant Major DeFries brings with him his lovely wife, Jane, who will quickly win the hearts of everyone she meets. Dennis and Jane, welcome to your new home and your new family. We know you'll be great. You will indeed shape the future of our Army. All of us at Training and Doctor Command stand with you as you take on the challenges of the future. Don't, holler, don't hesitate to give us a holler when we can ever help. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out to share a great day with us. A great day and a great change of great warriors, leaders, and Army families. And for allowing me the opportunity to represent Training and Doctrine Command and our Army in this ceremony. Thanks to everyone who made this.
this magnificent uh, ceremony possible. For sure, the soldiers standing on the stage today, I'll stop blabbering so they can move out and do something else today. Um, but may God bless you. May God bless our soldiers, civilians, family members, our non-commissioned officers, those in harm's way as we gather here today. Continue to bless our Army and our nation. Victory starts here. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the 20th Commandant of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy, Command Sergeant Major Malloy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You know, uh, over the past three years, I've had the uh, opportunity to stand here at this podium on numerous occasions. And I've actually had the chance to address four different sergeants major academy classes. And I tell you, the very first class I got to address, I was very nervous, as I didn't know what in the world they expected of me. And today, I can tell you, I'm equally as nervous uh, because I now know they know what's expected of me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I can tell you, uh, thank you so very much for your attendance this morning. Uh, you not only honor my family uh, with your attendance, but you certainly honor this great academy and institution uh, by your attendance. Uh, first, I want to recognize some special guests. I won't go through the, uh, the large list of those in attendance, but I, I do want to highlight a couple of them. Uh, Lieutenant General Mangum, sir, thank you so very much. Uh, first of all, for those wonderful remarks, and especially for representing all of the training doctrine command. Uh, I know the commanding general and several of our senior leaders are very busy in executing their duties throughout the command. Uh, but thank you so very much for coming down and uh, executing this change of responsibility between uh, Command Sergeant Major Dirk Fries and myself. That really means a lot to him and myself in this academy, uh, for you representing uh, the command here today. Uh, command Sergeant Major uh, Bailey, uh, thanks so much for being down here as well. Uh, every commander needs a great battle buddy, and, and today the DCG is lucky enough to have you at, at his side uh, representing him and all the soldiers in the command. Uh, Mr. Tom Thomas, sir, uh, you always make it a, a point to uh, make yourself available for uh, a lot of the uh, ceremonies here at Fort Bliss, and I really appreciate you again uh, taking the time to attend one of our ceremonies. Uh, we have several of the uh, NCO Academy commandants from the Warrior Leader Courses that uh, we've been fortunate to partner with and work with uh, from across the Army uh, who made it out today. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, an old soldier who served with on the battlefield, Command Sergeant Major John Jones, uh, came down from Pennsylvania uh, to be here today. Thank you so much, John, for being here uh, this morning. And of course, uh, Ms. Patty Woodridge, uh, who just had, uh, she, I tell you, there is a warrior and a trooper. If we could get our youngsters who are 18 years old to be as tough as her. Uh, on Friday, uh, she was not able to be here for graduation. She went into hospital. Uh, uh, Friday evening, Saturday morning, she had emergency surgery, was released from the hospital over the weekend, and called and said, I will be there. Make sure you have me a seat. Uh, and she refused the profile. So, Patty, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Also, uh, some of my family is here. Uh, my daughter, Daniel, uh, took a little break from college to come down and spend a, a couple of days with us. Uh, and my son wasn't able to make it, but it's always great to see her. Uh, of course, my wife, 29 wonderful years uh, that we've been in the Army together. She continues to stick by me. Uh, we're up to 17 moves now. Uh, hang in there. We'll, we'll see where they send us next. And of course, my uh, mother and father-in-law, Mary and Randy Denardi, uh, traveled from Indiana. Uh, all the way across the state of Texas. Uh, Texas has not shrunk, it's still just as big as it was. The first time you came out to El Paso, so thanks for coming out. Uh, and finally, uh, Don and Jeff, thanks for uh, the presentation of the flowers. Uh, Don and Karen Moten, dear friends. Uh, Lori and Joe Pritchard, my deputy commandant, thanks for accepting that role. And then uh, Crystal and, and Jake for being here. And finally, uh, as far as thanks, normally I, I end my thanks uh, by saying, uh, uh, to the mighty class of 64, 
Uh, but since you are now graduates, I'd just like to simply say to my fellow sergeants major, welcome. Cool. All right. The, uh, I'll tell you what a great day. Uh, today we really gather uh, to celebrate uh, three wonderful years. Uh, it's not about Malloy. I'll tell you, it's never about Malloy. It never has been, and I don't believe it ever will be. But today, rather, we gather to celebrate three wonderful years and accomplishments of this academy and this wonderful institution. And when we talk about this academy and this institution, and more than really the three years, it uh, really goes back to family and what does family really mean, and it comes down to the people that really defines this institution. Uh, there are several, several elements of this academy that we could recognize, and the first, I will tell you, as I've already mentioned, is that of family. But for three years, we have, uh, this academy has been recognized by Fort Bliss with some trophies for the number of, large number of volunteer hours uh, which we have contributed to not only Fort Bliss but the community. But this is not really what highlights uh, making our families in this academy great. No, it's the fact uh, that whenever there's a birth of a child or a promotion, it's our families that are always the first ones there uh, to celebrate and to recognize us in that great event. It's also in moments that are not uh, so glorious that they're also there. And they stand ready, whether it's a, when it's the loss of a loved one or a fellow family member, it's our families that are always there, and they've been there by our sides uh, throughout this very long war, and they continue to stand by our sides daily as we are allowed to execute our mission. Uh, so with that, uh, the first uh, ones I would like to recognize this morning and the Academy's great accomplishments and our success are our family. So please join me in a round of applause for our family. You know, over the past uh, few weeks, I've been asked, uh, you know, what's your legacy going to be here at the Academy? And I'll tell you, I've been very pleased to be able to avoid that question quite successfully, not being tied to any one item. Because I will tell you uh, that I have uh, no one thing that will be Malloy's legacy here. Uh, that, but rather, this Academy success is my legacy. The people makes this a great organization and is not any one individual, especially a commandant. I've been very blessed to have had the best cadre and staff a leader could ever ask for. Uh, you know, earlier you heard the uh, Deputy Commanding General uh, mention some of the accomplishments of this academy. Uh, and I will tell you that anytime uh, there are events like that that take place, Really what leads to those accomplishments are people that have vision. And I'll tell you that over 40 some years ago, there were some great leaders that had a great deal of vision. And then 40 some years ago for that vision to still be living strong, will tell you that they had it right. And there's a guy named General Haynes that got it right. And at the height of the Vietnam War in the late 60s, he had a great vision. He had a vision that we need to professionalize our NCO Corps and develop a non-commissioned officer education system. He also had a vision that we needed to educate our most senior non-commissioned officers and create an academy in the middle of a desert out in the middle of El Paso. <laughs> and we're still here. And he also had a vision of, of uh, transitioning from a, uh, at the time we had finished up the Korean conflict and transition straight into another war, the Vietnam War, and both of them were very bloody fights. And he wanted to transition into an all-volunteer service, and many doubted his vision, and, and others uh, who had that same vision. We had, the all, we had the Continental Army at the time, and he had this brown patch with a stripe in it, and, uh, and he wanted to split that, and they created the Forces Command and the Training and Doctrine Command. And I will tell you, here we are 42 some years later, and his vision is stronger and more alive than ever before. And what exists today is this great leader's vision. 
that what started out as one mission, a sergeant's major course, and a little bitty old World War II building in the middle of the sands in the desert here at Fort Bliss, Texas, and, and a vision of, to create an all-volunteer force as a part of professionalizing army has grown more today than a person probably could have ever imagined back then. Forces command is stronger than ever, and they're out uh, just as if an important piece of the professional development of our leaders and soldiers more than ever. Partnered stronger than ever with the training and doctrine command with two great generals leading that effort. And so all the pieces are in place. So a lot of times people ask me, so what is your role? Well, I see my role as the commandant, as the guy that stands there. And if I'm smart, I will just hold the door open and I will allow all the great talent in this building to do what they do best. And that is to execute the 14 missions that we do from this building. So over the last 42 years, our mission has grown from more than just the sergeant's major force. And now we execute 14 critical missions. And I will tell you that I believe uh, we do it quite well. And as I travel across the Army, one thing I very much enjoy to do is to brag about the great talent that resides here in this institution. And I like to tell them that what we do, we do very well. And we do it for a very good price. We do it for less than $15 million. We do it with less than 400 people. And we deliver it to 492,000 training seats to soldiers all around the world at any given time of the day. And I say that's not too bad. So as the commandant, I've been very blessed and very fortunate to have been a part of that. You know, the leaders that are produced from this academy and the soldiers that they touch reach across our army and will do so, I believe, for many years to come. And over the past three years, we have worked very hard to produce a strategy to synchronize the non-commissioned officer education from the structured self-development all the way past the sergeant's major course. We've uh, worked very hard to increase the rigor as well as the aptitude, the intellect, and the professionalism of our non-commissioned officer corps. And today we continue our efforts as we work as part of the, the non-commissioned officer 2020 initiative towards what the new non-commissioned officer development system and strategy will be for our Army. And as you can see, as I've already mentioned, I'm very proud of this academy and its accomplishment and especially the people. Uh, placed on out the walls outside of this auditorium are the pictures of our 19 previous commandants. Each of us during a different time, during a different set of challenges. However, I would like to think that one thing we all have in com or had in common is that we wanted one thing, and that was the development of the greatest non-commissioned officer corps ever known as to mankind in this world. The legacy is not Malloy, nor the commandants for the past 42 years, but that the next 42 years or more, it is that, that this academy will continue to produce the greatest leaders ever known. So thank you so very much for allowing me to be a part of this great institution. It has certainly been an honor. Hopefully I held the door wide enough open for you to do your job. Thank you so very much uh, for the time that I've had to spend with you over the last three years. It has certainly been an honor. May God bless each one of you, all team up. Ladies and gentlemen, the 21st Commandant of the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy, Command Sergeant Major DeVries. Good morning, distinguished guests, family and friends. I want to start by saying what an honor this is, and at the same time, very humbling. I cannot think of a position in the Army that I would rather serve in. Now, 
That being said, I will say that it is very uncomfortable to hear your bio read. I know for all you <laughs> commanders and CSMs, it's like listening to your own eulogy. <laughs> so, you know, that's, I'm glad that's over. It's very uncomfortable. But I want to thank all my family members for, that are here, coming from Michigan, Illinois, New Mexico, and Arizona. You've made this very special for Jane and I by being here. Thank you. And I especially appreciate having some hot water this morning when I took a shower. <laughs> General Mangum, thank you for making the trip out here. And I'm sorry to meet you daily, Dr. Butts. Um, I really appreciate it. Now, uh, I first met then Brigadier General Mangum the first day on Fort Drum as the incoming 1st Brigade, 10th Mountain CSM. He was hosting a hail for me and then Colonel Burleson and farewell to the outgoing commander in CSM. And after the customary, formal, you know, flowery statements, and sentiments about the, both the incoming and outgoing command teams, my first personal interaction with them was being introduced to 1792. Now, for those that you don't know, that's a kind of a high-quality whiskey. And I tell you good people this to make sure you're careful around the general at the reception, because he might, you know, corrupt you too. <laughs> you didn't think I remember that. <laughs> But Jane and I would also like to thank uh, Rory and Deborah Malloy for making us feel welcome and making this transition very easy. Sergeant Major Malloy, the access you gave me to the staff and directorates was exceptionally helpful and it will help me immensely in these first few weeks, even though at times it felt like I was drinking from a fire hose. This is an exceptionally talented staff and faculty, and if I have any issue, it would be that it is so much easier to take over from someone whose units have all kinds of problems. And that way you can come in and make changes and be a hero. But you are leaving this academy in great shape with a great reputation. You have, so you have made my job so much more difficult as I try to fill your shoes. Last but certainly not least, I want to thank my wife Jane and tell her how much I love her. I could not do this without your love and support. You've made this transition, like everyone before this, much easier than it otherwise would be, and I feel truly blessed to be at your side. In closing, because there's people out there time, you know, being an incoming guy, it's like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking to it. Somebody's got stopwatches out there. <laughs> In closing, again, I want to thank all of you for coming and helping make this a special event for the Malloys and for Jane and I. I look forward to serving the soldiers, civilians, and family members of the United States Sergeant Major Academy to ensure the NCOs of our Army get the best education and training that we can give them. And also, Mrs. Woolridge, I'd like to tell you that our house in this academy is always open to you. You're welcome anytime. So, thank you, Ultima. Victory starts here. Army strong. We would like to thank everyone for joining us here today for the milestone event in the life of the Academy. Command Sergeant Major DeVries and Jane will be hosting a reception in the Shugart Conference Room located above the Learning Resource Center immediately following the ceremony. Command Sergeant Major Malloy and Deborah will remain center stage for us to bid them a fond and final farewell. Please rise for the singing of the Army song and departure of the colors.
Is that right? Thank you for attending, and good morning. All team out.